this talk is about uh, how to publish a podcast uh, using WordPress. Thanks a lot. Yeah, I'll, I'll be showing my whole workflow. So we have a bit of tech over here and I hope you enjoy it. But before we start, I've got a slide about me. Hi there, I'm Simon. I'm from Germany, as you might hear. I've been a WordPress developer since 2008, so close to 11 years now. I work as a senior WordPress developer at a big German firm, no, no fancy WordPress agency, sadly. I've been organizing meetups and WordCamps since 2012. And if there's still free time after that, I'm blogging and podcasting with and about WordPress. And Unfortunately, I learned Latin in school, not French, so <laughs> I'm really sorry about that. You, you might think, podcast? What? Who of you is an active podcast listener? Well, it's about half, maybe a bit more than a foot. That's good. That's quite good. Um, for the rest of you who might be asking, wait, what's a podcast? Um, I've got some points for that. Podcasts are series, series of audio or video files. You can subscribe to them via RSS or Atom feed, but Atom is not a thing anymore, so don't worry. And in a study conducted by German public television, um, they called it medium for time sovereign listening, or the more fancy German word. Zeit souveränes Nachhören. You're welcome. Um, the great benefit for, for us as producers is we have total freedom of production. There's no time slot we have to fit in as we have at WordCamp for 30 minutes. I can talk for two minutes or 20 hours and put it out there, people can listen to it. I can do interviews, talk to other people. There's a lot of room for, for my own imagination. The final product will look something like this. Our listeners have apps on their phones, and we call them podcatchers, where they can subscribe to feeds and get notified when new episodes arrive. So this is the final outcome, but, but why should we do it? <laughs> I mean, there's so much more to do, isn't it? There are different, different angles of viewing at it. Some people are doing podcasts for marketing reasons, talking about their products, their own personality. Uh, others do it for monetization, talking about other people's products and doing advertising. Some do it for fame, quite a lot, I think. And the best motivation is fun. I podcast for fun. I have quite high standards in, in my production, but in the end, I do it for my own amusement. What, what do you podcast? I podcast about WordPress, actually, in, in German and English. Um, and the most important thing is every topic you can imagine, there's a niche for it. You can podcast about knitting or driving bicycles really fast, there will be an audience. I don't say you reach this audience, but somewhere they are hiding and you can help. So let's start in our podcast production with, uh, at the very basic level with uh, the concept. We have to think about some, some points. I call them questions to ask. Uh, these are important if I try to do a setup or try to plan the recording. First thing to keep in mind is how many people will there be? Because the number of people I want to record is important for the number of microphones, for example, I have to pay. Will the recording be central or remote or a mixture of both? So maybe some people are sitting in a room, others are connected by Skype or something else. And what kind of a format am I planning? Is it interview, just a couple of folks talking, or will it be 
super high intensity production like an audio feature. If I have answers for all of these points, I can really quickly go on to, to recording, um, which is nice because you actually get to do something. And it's nice because I can I can follow a kind of disease I have. It's uh, called gear acquisition syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> Most nerds suffer from it and go like crazy. We can buy hardware. Um, for those of you who want to follow this path, I fabricated a little shopping list with all the stuff we have to have to gather to. to record a podcast. First of all, of course, a microphone, because we have to get our sound into digitalized version. A recorder, audio interface. Sometimes you need extra headphones, and then you need also headphone amplifiers. And a couple of cords, because they are super, super fun. Um, and a bag or case. In, in my case, it's this beauty. It's super heavy. Not a good idea. <laughs> What's in the case? And with all the other equipment? All the other equipment uh, lives inside this case. When I started, I had quite a simple setup. It looked like this. It's a super simple USB microphone. Um, we were two guys. We had each had his, his own microphone and we connected by Skype and recorded. You can, you can plug your headphones in there to listen to the other person in your own voice. And it's the perfect way to start if you don't know if Podcasting is for you, if you will enjoy it even two months down the road. But quite quickly I realized, okay, yeah, that's nice, I like podcasting, but I want more than that. And you want to buy more gear? Of course I wanted to buy more gear. <laughs> so I started shopping, and I started with this. It's a headphone, if I have it right here, with a mic integrated. It's, it's quite nice because most, I think, American podcasters have like a fixed mic and it's on the table. It has its benefits, no doubt. But in my case, I, I thought about, okay, I'll be having interview partners. Don't do this regularly. I don't want them to focus on their distance to the mic. And if you have this thing on your head, um, the mic is always in the same position. No matter if you do stuff like this. So, if I go somewhere and interview a person, I put these strange mics on their head, and they look interesting. Second thing is an audio interface. I have to plug my mic and headphones somewhere where it's recorded. I have it inside this case. There it is. In my case, I... In my case, I chose the biggest available version. It's, it's quite a thing and it's heavy and also not a good idea if you're traveling a lot. And I'm traveling a lot. Um, you can plug 16 microphones in there. Just in case. No. <laughs> <laughs> I have like three. So. Um, but it's, it's super nice. I can. I can use Firewire and, and the Thunderbolt connector to plug it into my Mac if I'm not having a, the, the, the Project. projector in there. And all things connected to this interface will be recorded on my Mac. The headphone amplifier is a convenience thing. It's a really small device and each and every headphone is connected with it. So, people I talk to can regulate their own loudness on their headphones. Some people want it a bit louder, some less loud. So it's not for you to tune down the no, other people? No, 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 it's, it's just a monitor signal. It's not for the recording. Uh, yeah. It's like, I don't want to hear that guy. Exactly. <laughs> it's uh, quartz, quite a lot of them. I have them here, but I think you believe me. And software, of course. Um, you can use any kind of audio recording software, but some of them are especially made for journalistic purposes, so speech recording instead of music. Uh, I use Hindenburg, which is 
surprisingly reliant, despite its name, um, the German community developed a open source thing called Ultraschall, which is sitting on top of, of a software called Reaper. It's more less expensive. And that's about it in case of recording. After I finish recording my session, we come to post-production. And post-production is, is quite a lot of work, actually. Before I start post-production, my recording looks like this. I have every single interview partner in its own track, so I can edit them individually and cut out words or something. And after I finish, these two single tracks have um, been cut like a thousand times, I spend three to four times the length of the interview for post-production. So for a one-hour interview, I sit another four hours before it's done. You ha don't have to do this, <laughs> and maybe you shouldn't. Um, I like it if, if I get all the ums, uhs, mmms out there and, and maybe cut some sentences that got, got wrong, but you can just go there and, and put your whole recording up there. Can you do that for live? Uh, no. If it's live, you, you can't uh, edit. In just it. like the radio, like the sound music, let's do some advertisement uh, fee, some music. Yeah, you, you could loop music in there, but, but no, it's, it's quite a simple setup and it's not made for live streaming. Okay. If you want to stream live, you basically have to put out the, the raw version without editing before that. Yeah, maybe you could do some kind of a delay and then stream it with a minute of delay. No, 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 just, just don't. If I'm done with editing, I have a single file per track. So, it's still a multi-channel thing, every speaker has its own file, and I upload them to a service called Orphonic. Orphonic is awesome, it's basically magic. Uh, it's a Austrian company, I think. They use fancy kind of machine learning for auto-leveling, blah. And what they basically do is look at the audio, level it on the same loudness, it's standardized European, and clean the audio, get rid of humming sounds, popping sounds, strange background noises, they're quite good at it. And no matter how clean your audio files are, they will be amazing after you put them through a phonic. How much does that service cost? A phonic is free. It has like a two-hour processing time per month, a free thingy. Mm -hmm. If you want to do multi-channel um, productions like I do, it's, it starts at nine euro a month. So, so it's, it's okay. Yeah. And you can buy credits if you know you won't do like ten hours a month. You can buy credits and it's time. After this post-production circle, you have clean audio files. Cleaning, clean meaning they are rid of stupid words and crazy sounds. I use Orphonic to render them in different kinds of file formats. I have MP3, AIC, FLAC and OGG. Because depending on the device you're listening on, you sometimes can open MP3 and FLAC being a open source, low compression, high fidelity audio, it, it's, it's nice. I also fabricate chapter blocks, so my audience can skip different parts of, of a podcast, or if they're looking for something special, they can go, oh yeah, it's, it's about AMP, I'll go there, and jump directly to the, the time I, I talk about. I quite obsess over show notes, so I write a whole blog post about anything I talk about, and there are all the links uh, that I've talked about in the, in the recording as well. And Orphonic provides me with a lot of metadata I currently do not use, actually. So they know what's the percentage of time each speaker took speaking at the recording, they know gender, 
it's quite a lot of, of stuff of how I can analyze. Also, I'm experimenting with automatic transcriptions. Google has an AI service for it, and there's like two or three others. Transcription is a nice, nice thing with audio because audio is you can search in audio. You may know there's a podcast talking about WooCommerce and, and a special thing in it, but you can't find it because you can't do a text search. If it's transcribed, you can search in the transcript and, and find the minute at the, at the recording. Also, it's an accessibility feature, but automatic transcription is not super good at the moment. There is room for improvement. Let's take it that way. And after I, I'm done with, with uh, all processing and editing stuff, it's time for publishing. And because podcasts are published via the web, uh, there's a neat little software for that. You might have heard of it. It's called WordPress. Um, because of the way podcasts are designed, technically designed, um, they're quite, quite similar to, to blogs. We have single entries. RSS feeds, there's media involved, there's text involved, etc. So there are three things I'd like to talk about regarding WordPress and podcasts, three different solutions. The first is simple podcasting, it's a Gutenberg blog, developed by our friends at Ten Up. It's a really simple solution. The second is uh, WordPress.com. You could use WordPress.com in the in the past for podcast publishing, but they added a new feature on it there, so it got even easier. And the third option is the one I use for my own podcast. It's called, it's called Podlog Publisher. It's a quite extensive plugin and it will take a closer look at it. So simple podcasting is just a Gutenberg blog. You can define all your file to, to be displayed in there and it will add the player. On WordPress.com, I never used WordPress.com myself. Um, you can define a feed for your podcast and, and it will add a subscribe button, etc. And, yeah, I'm rushing through these steps. Uh, and there's the podcast, Podlove Publisher. And what could possibly go wrong, we'll do a little live demo. <laughs> Do you have any questions so far? That's nice. So, this is the interface the Portal of Publisher provides us with. It's basically a custom post type. I can, I can choose a title, a fancy podcast. I could add a description over here. I have a episode number I can give. And Podlove allows me to add contributors. So I can say, okay, in this episode you hear me and uh, this guest and I don't know who else. Then I define the file name. I have a standardized way to do this, so the stuff of phonic uh, renders is already right, has the right names and is put in the right place on my server, so this is just go there and, and grab it. And if I've configured it right, I just have to hit publish and it's done. But because the Podlog Publisher has about 3 million options, it's quite hard. It's an extensive, extensive thing. Let's take a look at the, at the settings. There's a lot of metadata in there. I have to get the name of my podcast, subtitle, summary, some artwork, and the language. That's quite important. And then I can do this over and over again for all kinds of all kind of topics. All this data is stored inside my RSS feed. So podcast directories like uh, the iTunes directory can go there and grab it from there. They know the, the author, they know the title, uh, they also know <coughs> artwork and stuff. All of these things are stored inside my feed and put there by the podcast uh, publisher. I can define the file formats I want to I want to output. I already mentioned those, it's MP3, AC, etc. 
And each and every file format has its own feed, so you can explicitly go to the feed and select the kind of file you want to use. Podlov also, because it's not in itself complex enough, has a twig based template editor. You can go there and do all kinds of crazy stuff with your templating. In most cases you won't need custom templates for this. And I already showed you can do stuff with contributors and add not only name and avatar but also gender, social media profiles, donation links, etc. It's quite nice if you do this over a longer time and can do some statistics and say, oh, the guest I most often host is, uh, is my friend Casper, who's often up there. Or you can say, okay, let's, let's see all the episodes a special person appeared in. It's quite a nice, I, I'm made up that a geek, so I, I like these kinds of things. And if we did all of these steps in the correct order and completed them actually, we're back in the podcast area and have published our first episode, hopefully. And that's the point we, we leave this at, but of course it's not the end of, of a podcast lifecycle because you can do a lot of marketing there, you can talk to people at WordCamps and talk about your podcast there. So, Thank you very much for listening, even though it was quite late. And are there any questions? So this is can do you have an example of how the podcast is rendered on this website? So how the right? podcast is rendered on a website, yeah. yeah, of course. And, and the kind of functionality that the end user actually has to interact with it. Uh, the podcast, the uh, Podlove Publisher, podcast, Podlove Publisher has its own web player. Okay. Um, it knows about the audio files are specified, and the web player knows my browser, so it can switch the right file type to yes. to be used. And as a user, I just can hit the play button and. Not sure if we can Welcome to episode two. And and play the file. I can go over here and download it in the format I'd like to. And also I can share it with whoever I want to share it with. And all these things are configurable in the plugin yeah. to determine what the user You can is. choose things like, like color and social networks you want to display. Can you plug in with it afterwards if you don't like that type? Um, because you write down upload it, do you have to re-upload it again? The question is if you can change the plugin. Yeah, without re-uploading. Uh, the files are not uploaded directly to WordPress or, or the publisher. They are somewhere on the FTP server specified. So technically you don't have to have to re-upload them, but you might want to consider effects because if you get rid of the of the puddle of publisher, also all your feeds go down, etc. So you should be able to, to switch plugins, especially if other podcast plugins use custom post types as well. But there's there's quite a lot of stuff to, to consider. Sorry, I can't answer this in, in like a short, short amount of time. Um, for the WordPress world, there's a lot of, of Twitter that's quite useful, and then maybe Facebook sharing. Um, and you can go all the way with printing flyers or something. I don't know. It's, it's quite a lot to do. So, thank you. What's the address of your 
uh, WordPress podcast site. Uh, I'm not here for advertisement. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm curious. It's uh, pressthis.net. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. I think we run out of time. Yeah. Uh, is it a short question? <laughs> <laughs> I <don't. laughs> The link we type to iTunes, the feed. Is you can you can uh, add your your feed to to iTunes. It's um, podcast. Google, just Google pub, podcast publishing with iTunes. Thank you.